Hello, and welcome to Simple Man Sermons, the preachings of a simple man called by God to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Today I'm going to talk to you about washing clean of the culture. Recently did a stint going and seeing some friends and family, acquaintances, and they're no offense, and I'm not going to name any names or anything, but I would call them a lot more worldly people. People that live in the culture. People that have television. People that watch television. People that are involved in politics and things like this. And I guess until you delve into that, if you're set apart, we're called to be set apart by God, the one who made you in his image. And he tells you to be set apart. If you're so far removed for so long, I guess you kind of forget what a lot of people deal with day to day. And maybe it's like that frog in a pot analogy. Now that analogy is a fallacy, I do believe. Amphibians thermoregulate. Meaning if you turn that pot on, once it gets too hot, that frog is going to try to get out. I know that that goes against the common belief of that but check that out don't actually do that to a frog that would be cruel but double check that but frogs still regulate when that pot gets too hot it's going to try and get out no matter how gradually it's going to try and seek a cooler place that's what reptiles and amphibians are designed to do but you get the analogy or you get the analogy that frogs If you throw them in a pot of boiling water, they're going to try and get out. And if you gradually increase it, maybe they don't even know because their environment changes so gradually they're not going to take notice. You understand that analogy even if it's not true. It's still beneficial here. Maybe people that are in the culture and society don't even realize the depth of depravity that our culture and society has sunk to. I want to state very plainly that I am not perfect. If you're looking for the teachings of a perfect man, the opinions of a perfect man, don't look to me. I'm a sinner. Look to Christ, the only perfect man that ever lived. And I pray that he has mercy on me, a sinner. But I am called to follow Jesus and do what Jesus did. And Jesus pointed out problems with the culture of the time. I would like to point out maybe some things you're not even focused on I was again with people that have television and a lot of times people's default is to just sit down and watch TV I I got rid of TV a long time ago wife got rid of TV before she met me but I get that that's the thing that people do I honestly wasted a lot more hours of my life in front of a television than I ever should have I get that that's something that people do I was sitting down I don't even remember what channel it was And a commercial came on for Plan B abortion drugs. A commercial. Like that anybody, kids, anybody would just flash in front of their face. A commercial to murder little babies. A commercial to stop human life, to end human life, a beautiful, beautiful gift from God to snuff it out for the sake of convenience. And it's being advertised on television. Have we fallen, have we fallen so far that we're advertising the murder of innocent babies. Go look up what Jesus says. It would be better to have a millstone tied around your neck and thrown into the ocean. Where we are now in a society where we don't protect the least of these, where we don't stick up for the least of these, we murder them because they're inconvenient. And there's no public outcry. There's no outrage over this. Have you been in the pot so long that you don't even notice it? I think I have to call it out here. I think I have to shake some people awake. 
I recently also or the television show on and it was something about Oak Island. Maybe it's just called Oak Island. And I was familiar with the Oak Island. I like that kind of stuff. But I was watching this show and they were so focused on finding some kind of treasure, gold and silver and trinkets. They were spending who knows how much money in excavation and excavating material. I have a lot of experience with that equipment, but I have enough to know that that stuff is really, really expensive. And not just the money they were sinking into this, the time and years of their life for the sake of gold and trinkets and treasure. Some of them at this point have been going at this apparently for a long time and they're pretty old men. And I I don't think it's unique to the people in this show, but it's a clear, clear example of how we get so focused on the wrong things. Naked you came into this world and naked you'll go out of it. If one of these men find the treasure when they're 80... And they wasted 40 years looking for gold. Is that a worthwhile trade? And what really struck me is there, Oak Island, Nova Scotia. It is a beautiful, pristine wilderness. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows us his handiwork. They were showing this and they were like excavating these big ugly pits and draining swamps. And... They were in the midst of this beautiful creation on an island. Think of the amazing fishing they could be doing. Think of the beauty of that landscape created by God to be enjoyed. And they're so focused on gold. And a little bit after that, I started listening to an audiobook that I don't recommend because just... They were trying to put woke theology, I think, into a book about the conquistadors. I wanted a, I wanted a good historical account of the conquistadors and the early contact with the early Americans. That's not what I got. I got some woke spin on it, which I wasn't impressed with. But one of the quotes really stood out to me. Now I looked the quote up and found it on Reddit, and this is. Obviously not an exact quote because it's not in Spanish, which is likely what he said it in. But from Hernan Cortez, I and my companions suffer from a disease of the heart which can be cured only with gold. It reminded me of another quote, I believe from an Inca, Manco, and I found this on a PBS website, but... Manco himself bitterly remarked, even if the snow of the Andes turned to gold, still they would not be satisfied. Greed like that is a disease, and I think our culture sadly pushes that on people. The keeping up with the Joneses, the big house, the fancy car, the all the shows about these people in these giant houses and Let us not forget Almighty, all-knowing God made flesh. Jesus Christ said, A man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. Now, money is not evil. Gold is not evil. It's an element that God created. It's part of God's creation. It is not malum and say it's not evil by nature. People often get that quote wrong. Money is not the root of all evil. The love, the love of money is the root of all evil. When you put it on a pedestal, when you idolize it, idolatry is wrong. It hurts you. It's a disease of the heart. It seems like the conquistador was kind of being honest there. He suffered from a disease. Greed. It's okay to have nice stuff. It's okay to have possessions. But you're called to be in dominion, in control. Possess and control the things that you own and don't let them possess and control you. The second you would break the law of Almighty God for the sake of trinkets, for the sake of gold, or worthless zeros in a bank account, just 
It's a disease of the heart. And I think it's so being pushed on today's culture. You see a little bit of a pushback on that in like the tiny house stuff and the living off grid and returning to homesteading. My wife and I live as neo-nomads. If you don't know if this is like your first time listening, we live as neo-nomads. We are strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Now we all are. You are too listening. You're a stranger and a pilgrim on the earth. A good verse about that. They all died in faith, not having received the promise, but seeing it afar off. For they declared plainly that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For if they had been mindful of the country from whence they came, they may have been permitted to return. But as it were, they sought a better country, a heavenly country, where God would not be ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared for them a city. Wherever you live, whatever state, whatever city, whatever town, whatever house. It's a temporary thing. It's a temporary thing. Again, naked we came into this world and naked we're going out of it. It's also written, godliness with contentment is great gain. Now, if those men want to, going back to that show, if they want to spend their time in disposable income... Digging pits in the ground and spending decades of their life doing that. That's how they want to spend their time. But are we as a culture collectively broadening out from those few individuals? Are we missing the forest for the trees? Are we so distracted by shiny trinkets that we miss the bigger gifts of God? How much happier do you think we'd be as a people, as a culture, if we spent more time outside looking at the wind blow through the leaves and the trees, literally stopping to smell the roses? If we did more time enjoying the beauty of God's creation than shopping on Amazon? Oh, there's a time and a place to go shopping. I mean, you, you know, my wife went to Winco tonight to get food. I recently lost a pocket knife. I will probably order another one. Like, there's a, there's, I'm not going to say that I don't buy stuff. Hopefully I spent more time today walking with my dog and watching him play and especially reading my Bible and being grounded in the Word of God and what he says is true and right and wrong versus sitting in front of a box being programmed by culture and society that I don't want to be a part of telling me what I should accept and not accept. Just because whoever is in charge of that TV station says that putting an ad for drugs to kill unborn children is okay and acceptable, it's not and it shouldn't be. They're not the authors and the dictators of what's right and wrong and acceptable. God is the author of what's right and wrong. He doesn't change. There is objective, immutable truth. God, he does not change. You'll find that in the book of Malachi. He doesn't change. He decides what truth is and is not. Not us. Not the culture. And you must have a right moral standing and background and what right and wrong is and there's only one answer to that God a lot of people might think it's bad or we shouldn't admit that we live in a Christian nation a Judeo-Christian society and culture but every day you reap the benefits of that and then some people turn their nose up at it you shall not murder says who What do you base that law on? What can an atheist who think that we're evolved pond scum, which is garbage by the way, you were made special and unique in the image of God. You're not a monkey without a tail. How could the atheist say it's wrong to murder? On what moral grounds? Who says? I know why. Because God says. He made me and created me and everything else in creation. He designed he tells us how to love him and how to love our neighbor as ourself. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. 
You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. He decides that, not us, and we don't get to change it. If we change it, we're wrong. And if the culture collectively changes it, then the culture is wrong. It doesn't make it okay. If the culture, moral passes as a law and makes murder legal, might makes right, it's still wrong. Our culture, I think, largely has turned their back on adultery, not made it the and not look at it as the egregious sin that it is. Breaking the law of God. You're a man that swore an oath, took a vow. Jesus. Jesus says, New Testament, Jesus. Says if a man divorces his wife, he commits adultery. It's a sin. It's wrong. How about the use of the Lord's name in vain? The third commandment, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. How did we get to the point where people can just use the name of the Lord in vain or blaspheme on television? That's just a thing that's permitted. What do you think the pilgrims that hacked the living out of the wilderness by the grace of God would say if they heard that? What happened? Where's the outcry? How about the entire garbage philosophy of feminism? We could do show after show on that. Now I want to be clear. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Both distinct, separate, male and female. That's a whole other, probably, episode or a dozen. No matter what culture says, men and women are different. And you don't get to decide which one you are. Some things in life you can't change. But this whole garbage culture, women have been hoodwinked and blinded into thinking it's somehow liberating to be promiscuous. I can be just as sinful as a man now in this culture. They wonder why they're sad and unfulfilled year after year, many of them. When they'll just sleep with a man without any promise of security or safety or commitment. And then they wonder why no man is offering them safety and security and commitment. It's disgusting for both men and women. You shouldn't be acting like that. To say that you can be just as sinful as a man in the current culture is not a virtue. It's not a virtue. You know what's a virtue for male and female? Self-control. Self-control is a virtue for both sexes. Male and female. Talk about something culture and society doesn't value anymore. You'll find this in the first book of Corinthians. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is written the two will become one flesh. But whoever unites with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee Sexual immorality. For all other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Men, if you are fed up, and I'm so blessed that I have a wonderful wife, a great blessing from God. I love my wife. I wouldn't trade her for a dozen Victoria's Secret models. If you're fed up out there 
thinking it's so hard to find a good moral woman. Let me ask you this. Are you acting good and moral? Are you treating your body like it's a temple of the Holy Spirit? Or are you treating it like an amusement park? Don't be a hypocrite. Don't get mad at the women for doing this stuff and then get mad because you can't find a good one if you're acting the same way. Self-control is a virtue for both. If heretofore you've been engrossed in the miry pit that is this culture today, Get out of that muck and that mire and that filth. Build your life on better things. On a firm foundation. On the rock. On Jesus Christ. Come out of her, my people. Well, I'm crying out to you here. Come out of her, my people. Be separate. Be set apart. That's what holy means. It means set apart. I think a lot of people have a wrong view of what that word means. It means set apart. It means to be different. It's not just a novel idea. It's instruction from the Lord God Almighty. He says more than once, You shall be holy, for I am holy. You are called to be set apart. Be set apart. Come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. A very similar verse. Therefore, come out from among them, and be separate, says the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. Also, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away. But the man who does the will of God lives forever.